Good morning and welcome in our Savior's name. A special welcome to any guests and visitors we have joining us today. Glad that you're here. Today's the 19th Sunday after Pentecost, and today, once again, we're going to look at the Gospel lesson. As Jesus approaches Good Friday, as He approaches the end of His earthly life and ministry, He's once again continuing that conversation in the synagogue with the Pharisees, the, the scribes, and, and the crowds there in the synagogue. And as he, as he discusses, last week he talked about the parable of the tenants, and now he's moving on to the parable of the marriage feast. And these parables really are meant to be spoken about together. And so we'll look at the parable of the marriage feast this week as we look at what will the life to come look like and what will Judgment Day look like. It can be nerve-wracking to ponder these things, and yet... We as Christians, we live in the hope and the promise of God. So that will be our our conversation for today. This morning, uh, we make our beginning with our opening song, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Let us take a, a, a moment to set our hearts and our minds on things above as we prepare our hearts for worship. Come, now is the time to worship. It's uh, as we come before the altar of our Lord that we prepare our hearts for worship, that we recognize that we come here as beggars in need of God's love and forgiveness. But we come here and God meets us in this place. He meets us here with His good gifts in word and sacrament. And just as such, He meets us here 
once again this morning. And so we make our beginning in the name of that God, that God who comes here and dwells in our presence, in the name of the triune God, the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening sentences come from Psalms 9, 33 and 122. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. I will be, I will be glad and exult in you. I will, sing your, I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our gl- heart is glad in Him because we trust in His holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Let us make our confession to our God, our Heavenly Father. O God, our Father, we have sinned against You in thought, word, and deed. We have transgressed Your law and have brought injury to others. We have not always shown forth our faith in every aspect of our lives. We sincerely repent of our sins. Have mercy on us and hear this, our confession, O Lord. Grant us Your grace and forgiveness in Jesus Christ by the renewing work of the Holy Spirit within us. Lead us to amend our sinful lives that each day we grow in righteousness and godly living to the glory of Your holy name. Well, the good news for you today is that the Lord hears our pleas and accepts our prayers. To each of us, our Lord promises forgiveness, life, and salvation. And so as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, You have called us in Christ to live as those who are joyfully assured of Your forgiveness and care. Grant us a full sense of being a community gathered together in Your love as we await the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which shall have no end. This we ask for the sake of Jesus, our Savior and our King. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich, full, rich food full of marrow, of, we- of aged wine well refined. And He will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of His people He will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is your God. We have waited for Him that He might save us. This is the Lord We have waited for Him. Let us be glad and rejoice in His salvation. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. 
and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have received your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. This is the Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son and sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell those who are invited, See, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, but those, who, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to You, O Christ. 
We now join in our hymn of the day, Rejoice, Rejoice, Believers. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning in our Gospel lesson, Jesus tells of another parable. And this parable really is meant to be paired with the previous parable. As Jesus is still in the same conversation with the Pharisees and, the, and scribes, teachers of the law, and all uh, all of the crowd there in the synagogue, he continues to to teach the people just three days before his death would come. And so it's very fitting that we talked about the parable of the tenants last week. As we looked at the parable of the tenants, the, the judgment that the son would have to endure for the sake of the father's will, for the sake of the vineyard. It was a picture of Good Friday. The parable of the tenants really pointed to what would happen to Jesus in just a few days as He was cast outside of the walls of Jerusalem and killed for the sake of God's people. It's fitting then that we talk about the parable of the marriage feast, which really is a foreshadow of Easter. 
as Jesus tells this parable, this parable points to the Son who's no longer dead as He was in the previous parable, but instead is alive. And more than that, the Father is, is planning this beautiful celebration, this marriage feast for His Son, Jesus. So we ask ourselves, what is this marriage feast for? And the answer is that this is the marriage of Jesus and the church. We talk about this quite a bit in Scripture and quite a bit in the church, but the marriage feast is a huge symbol of what the, the life to come will, be look, will look like. In Scripture, it talks about it time and time again where there will be this huge celebration in heaven as we join the saints who have gone before us in a marriage feast of the Lamb and His kingdom. In fact, we use those same words when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom, which shall have no end. This marriage feast is very significant for us as God's people and for His church. So let's look at the parable. Jesus begins with this foundational statement. Or well, he concludes the parable with this foundational statement, but this this statement really fleshes out what this parable is all about and the warning that Jesus is giving his people. He says, Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, at first glance, this statement can be very uncomfortable for us. Because first of all, it insinuates that there are going to be those people who are not chosen and it begs the question well how do i know if i have been chosen ah we'll get to that but then it also indicates that god is choosing who makes it and who doesn't and that can be very scary that's a lot of power in god's hands and it's a lot of trust that he calls us to give And so in order to really comprehend what exactly this phrase is about, let's look at the parable and let's flesh this out a little bit. So in this parable, Jesus describes three different kinds of people, three different groups of people. And these three different people really are are three different responses to God's love and salvation. As God extends the invitation to the marriage feast, as He extends His gift of grace, forgiveness, life, and salvation to His people, there are three different ways that people respond. So the first group is the chosen guests. All the way back to the time of Abraham, God has promised that He will make for Himself a people. And and when it comes to the time of Moses, he names his people. He says, you will be my people and I will be your God. And he sets them apart as his chosen people. And so it's fitting that this is the first group that God invites to the marriage feast. Now the problem here is the response that these people give to God's promise. Some of the people ignore God completely. As His servants come and invite them to the marriage feast, they ignore Him. They don't have time for God in their lives. They don't have time for this marriage feast. And so they go about their lives. One to their farm, another to their work. They can't find time for God in their lives. Some respond even more violently to these servants, humiliating, shaming them, beating them, killing them. Just like the kingdom of Israel had done to their prophets many years before. So it's not surprising then when the king responds in anger. In fact, he goes out and he has these unfaithful guests killed. 
And he has their city destroyed. And this really it points to the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 A.D. when God has the Romans come and destroy Jerusalem completely. A punishment for the death of His Son. So after God's chosen people fail to to be receptive to the call, to the promise, to the hope that He lays before them, He extends the invitation to everyone. He tells the servants to go out and tell everyone to come and join. He provides this open invitation to all people. Jews, Gentiles, sinful, righteous people. It doesn't matter. He extends the invitation to all people to come to His marriage feast. And it brings us to the second group of people now. The guest who comes into the marriage feast without wedding clothes. See, because of what Jesus did on the cross and because of His sacrifice, Even us sinners, even us broken people can enter into the family of God here in this place. He invites us, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles, us included. And as we gather, we prepare, we wear the wedding clothes that He gives us. And so this guest without wedding clothes really is a Christian who has fallen away. A believer in God who has fallen away from God's promises. And so, an important part of this then is talking about these wedding clothes. So these wedding clothes are the robes of Christ's righteousness. As as Jesus goes to the cross and He dies for our sins, His merits, His works, save us. We are saved by the righteousness of Christ. And as He dies on that cross, He gives us the promise that His blood will cleanse us from all unrighteousness and that we will be clothed in robes of righteousness. This is the way that Christ describes those robes of righteousness. These are the wedding clothes that allow us into the banquet of heaven. And it's these clothes that we are given in baptism. We receive our wedding clothes as a free gift by the Holy Spirit in baptism. As we are baptized, the Holy Spirit works faith within us and we are given a new life, new clothes, the robes of Christ's righteousness laid over us. That's why in baptism, so often you see the child wearing a white dress or a white garment. This is a a reminder that they are now clothed in Christ's righteousness. And it's these wedding clothes that permit us sinful people to be at the wedding feast in heaven. See, because when God looks at us, He doesn't see broken, empty, dirty rags on us, but He sees the works of His Son. He sees the robes of righteousness that we are clothed in. And as He looks at us and sees that we are redeemed by Christ, He welcomes us into the banquet. It's an incredible, incredible gift. But as we circle back around then to this this guest who is in the feast without wedding clothes, we have to wonder what is going on here? Well, this guest has chosen not to wear his wedding clothes. He has been given them, and yet he has rejected the faith that the Spirit has given. He has rejected these robes of righteousness. And thus... He has rejected the Holy Spirit Himself. This is why He receives such harsh judgment. It's not because God has rejected Him. It's because He has rejected God. And so His punishment is His own doing. 
as he has rejected God, yes, God cannot force him into acceptance. But his rejection has left him out in the dark where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Fortunately, there's a third group. The faithful guests. These are believers who have not fallen away from the faith, but are active in their faith. These are the believers that are clothed with the robes of righteousness, have embraced God's gift of love and salvation. This is who we want to be. And this is who we are because of our baptism. So it brings us back to Jesus' foundational point. Many are called, but few are chosen. The point that, that, that needs to be made here is that this isn't some random selection. This isn't just, you know, God picks every third person who can come into the wedding feast. All are called. All people are welcome. But few are chosen. Not because God has chosen that they cannot come in, but because they have rejected God. This isn't a random selection, but it's one made on the merits of Jesus Christ. It's one made by His good works. As He covers us with His good works, with His robes of righteousness, we are welcomed in. And so the ones who are not chosen are those who have rejected their faith. It's those who have rejected God's love and salvation for their lives. And the question then becomes, well, how do I know that I'm not one of them? How do I know that I have not rejected my faith? What can I do? Well, a good question but the first answer is it's already been done for you Jesus accomplished it when he died on the cross to cleanse you from your sins and when he rose from the dead he has given you robes of righteousness in your baptism the Holy Spirit bestows faith upon you bestows those robes of righteousness in order that you might be saved You are given the wedding clothes. They're in your hands. Now, it's just a matter of holding on to them. Wearing those robes of righteousness proudly. Nurture your faith. That's the second point. Nurture your faith. Make your faith a priority in your life. Make these robes of righteousness a priority in your life. As you live as God's people, it matters how you live. Come to church. Come to Bible class. Read Scripture in your homes. Make this a priority in your life. Nurture your faith so that you don't fall away like the guest who comes to the wedding banquet without wedding clothes. It's the one who neglected his faith, who said, no, I don't have time for you, God, and walked away. We don't, want to, uh, we don't want to respond out of violence to God's wonderful invitation. We don't want to lose track of time and spend no time with God. And we also don't want to push him away and reject him. But instead, make a faith a priority in your life. Nurture that faith. And keep it at the center of your life. And then finally, we need to look out for one another. As the people of God, as the body of Christ, we need to keep one another from drifting away. And so if you see somebody who is drifting away from the faith, Or maybe you notice that somebody you know has has not been coming to church lately. Reach out to them. Ask them what's up. Encourage them to come back. We don't want others drifting away from the promises of God and suffering the consequences. It's so important that we recognize God's gift for our lives and take that seriously. 
And as God's people, we're called to look out for one another. As we look, as we do all these things, we recognize the promise, the love that God has given us. He has invited us to the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom. The eternal life that awaits for us because of Jesus' death on the cross. And as we look to that promised day, there should be so much joy. When we join the Lamb in His kingdom, when we are reunited with God once again, it will be a joyous day. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death, no more sin. We will be with our God once and again, once again forever. Amen? Amen. Now may the peace which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As we, as we bring this reflection on Scripture to a close, I, I want you to take a minute now and think of one person who you have not seen in a long time. One person who needs encouragement. Reach out to that person. Okay? Write their name down now. And reach out to that person this week. And just check on them. See how they're doing. See, if they're, see what you can do for them. Make sure that they are remaining in the faith, that they are growing and, and encouraged by the love of God. Remind them of whose they are in Christ Jesus, that they have the robes of righteousness. And encourage them to take advantage of the many opportunities we have to grow in our faith. Come to church. Come to Bible class. Read Scripture in your homes. Seek out opportunities to nurture faith and encourage other people to do so as well. So if you haven't already, please write down that name. Put it up on your refrigerator or somewhere where you'll see it. And be sure to call that person this week. Just reach out to them and see how they're doing. Having heard God's Word, let us uh, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we move into a time of prayer, we, we recognize the, the gifts that God has given us and the gifts that we return to our God generously and joyfully, just as He has called us to do. So let us pray uh, both for these blessings, that they might be a blessing for those outside of our walls and for the, uh, and for, uh, the, the mission and ministry here at Redemption and for all people according to their needs. Lord, You are the King of everything. And You are so generous with our lives. You have invited us to the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom. A tremendous blessing that we could never fully comprehend until we are invited into Your gates at the end of days. We give you thanks for the many ways that you bless us and care for us in our daily lives. We ask, Lord, that you would bless these gifts that we return to you, that they might be used for mission and ministry and for your purposes throughout the world. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. We pray for the church, for the leaders of the church, for all pastors and missionaries. For, prepare, 
for those preparing for church vocations and for those considering full-time church service. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the blessing of marriage and faithfulness of husbands and wives, for the children entrusted to their care, for the loving care of children who have suffered abuse or neglect, and for those who open their homes to children in foster care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a welcoming spirit in our congregation, for boldness in our invitation to those without a church home, and for a willingness to serve our neighbor in need and the stranger whose lives cross our paths. Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For compassion toward the sick and those who suffer. For those who need our assistance. For the hospitalized, those recovering, and especially for those who have requested prayers and those we name in our hearts. That God may grant them healing, comfort, strength, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the dawn of God's eternal day, for an end to death and sorrow, for the comfort of those who grieve, and for the strength of those facing death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the communion upon the body and blood of our Lord, and for hearts that burn with desire for the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom without end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those preparing for baptism, for catechumens, and for places where we gather to teach and learn God's Word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For gratitude in receiving the Lord's gifts and blessings, for generosity in sharing these resources with those in need, and for the tithes and offerings to support the work of the kingdom in this place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For grace, that we may hear and heed the invitation of our Lord and joyfully wear the baptismal clothing of His righteousness. Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. All these things, Lord, we pray You to grant us according to Your mercy in Jesus Christ and to fill us with contentment that trusting in Your gracious will for all things, our hearts may enjoy perfect rest and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with You in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you His peace. Amen. We now join in our closing hymn, the benediction song. May the peace of God our heavenly Father and the grace of Christ the risen Son and the Worship of God the Spirit, keep our hearts and minds within His love, and to Him be praised for His glorious reign, from the depths of earth to the heights of heaven, we declare the name of the Lamb was slain, Christ eternal, the King of Understanding and this grace which makes us what we are, and this fellowship of his communion make us one in spirit and in heart, and to him be praise for.
His glorious reign From the depths of earth to the heights of heaven We declare the name of the Lamb once slain Christ eternal, the King of kings Good morning once again and thank you for joining us uh, if, if we haven't had the opportunity of meeting, uh, my name is Pastor Joshua Parrish. I'm the pastor here at Redemption. Uh, and, and serving also today is Jason Kuzman, our DCE, wonderful servant of the Lord. Um, we're glad to make your acquaintance. Uh, just a couple of announcements today. <coughs> uh, first, we had our barbecue uh, on, on October Second, yeah. man, October second. It was an awesome, awesome event. A uh, special thank you to uh, all those who who helped out. Um, it it was just a wonderful event. It went so smoothly. Uh, the Polzines came out and played music for us. It was awesome. Thank you to the Polzines, um, and, and uh, thank you for all of you who who came and, and enjoyed food with us. It was an awesome, awesome event. And uh, uh, just thank you for being a part of that. It was, it was really cool. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this announcement is a little overdue. Caring Ministry, you might have seen, uh, they had some announcements uh, the last couple weeks. Uh, but they are taking up a collection of, uh, of supplies for, for uh, the growing homeless population in our area. As COVID has hit, families and, and has hit uh, individuals really, really hard. Uh, some, a lot of people losing jobs. Uh, quite a few people have lost their homes. Um, and so a lot of the hotels in our area have, have taken them in uh, to, to serve them and to take care of them. Uh, and uh, the need grows for uh, support and care of this uh, growing community. And so uh, our caring ministry has, has uh, set up an opportunity with the county that we can be sharing some, uh, some of the, those needs with them. And so we're taking up a collection of t-shirts and sweatpants, uh, gently used, um, with no religious or political uh, writings on them, laundry pods, snacks, and men's underwear. Uh, so if you have any of those things and you want to donate them, you can bring them into the office anytime during our office hours or to the Sunday morning service in person um, or to our Wednesday night services or uh, any opportunity that you have coming to the church, you're welcome to drop it by. Uh, <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you don't have any of those things but you want to help out, you're welcome to donate money and the caring ministry will take that money and go ahead and shop than for uh, those needs. That's all I have for today. I pray God's richest blessings on you as you go about this week as a loved child of God, awaiting the marriage feast of the Lamb in His kingdom. Go in His peace. Amen. <clears throat>